Hi, my name is Salha Khan and I am from UT Austin. Uh, today I'll be discussing energy coverage in millimeter wave energy harvesting networks. So uh, we all know that millimeter wave is a key candidate technology for future 5G systems. Uh, and millimeter wave cellular systems will typically feature uh, large antenna arrays at the transmitter and receiver and extremely dense base station deployments. Uh, however, millimeter wave also suffers from poor propagation characteristics, such as extreme sensitivity to blockage uh, due to buildings. Uh, and millimeter wave uh, has many potential uh, applications, one of which is wireless energy harvesting or wireless power or energy transfer, uh, where uh, low power sensors extract energy from the incident uh, millimeter wave signals. Now it's not clear how energy harvesting at millimeter wave compares to the UHF band. This is mainly because uh, while large directionality could provide higher gains, however, uh, the propagation characteristics are very poor compared to UHF. Uh, so in this work, we uh, characterize the performance of uh, millimeter wave energy harvesting uh, and compare it uh, to the UHF case. So uh, in our system model, we consider a large scale network uh, with millimeter wave base stations and receivers. So the millimeter wave base stations, as you could see, are modeled using a Poisson point process. And uh, also visible are uh, the low power sensors that harvest energy in the millimeter wave band. Uh, we also include blockages due to building in our model. Uh, which are also modeled using a Poisson point process independent of the base station process. This analytical model captures key features of millimeter wave, uh, such as directional antenna arrays uh, at the transmitter and receiver. Uh, so we assume a sectored antenna model, uh, which is shown uh, here, where there is a main lobe uh, gain and a side lobe gain, uh, and corresponding bits are also visible. Uh, as mentioned before, we captured the uh, sensitivity to building blockages using another Poisson point process for the buildings. And we assume different propagation characteristics for the line of sight and non-line of sight links, uh, which is supported by empirical uh, evidence. Uh, so in, in our system model, uh, we consider two types of sensors. One we call connected, the other uh, non-connected. So if uh, a sensor is already aligned with a millimeter wave base station, then we call it a connected receiver or sensor. Uh, however, if it is completely invisible to the millimeter wave base stations, uh, that is to say we do not assume any prior beam alignment, then we call it a non-connected uh, receiver. So we will find analytical expressions for the energy coverage probability for both connected and non-connected cases. Uh, so on your right uh, is a description of the performance metric, uh, which uh, we call the energy coverage probability, and define it as the probability that the harvested energy in a given slot exceeds a required threshold size. So, um, In our channel model, uh, we assume different uh, fading parameters for the line of sight and non-line of sight links. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, the directivity gain uh, is uh, also shown in this. Can we uh, do this slide again? Again. So, uh, here are the results uh, for the energy coverage probability for the connected and non-connected cases. Uh, so on your left, uh, we have uh, plotted the energy coverage probability uh, for different antenna beam patterns. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, the energy coverage probability increases with, the, uh, uh, with narrower beams. Uh, this is because of higher beam forming gains that uh, a receiver 
uh, experiences. And on the right, uh, for a given antenna beam pattern, we have plotted the energy coverage probability versus the base station density. And as expected, uh, the energy coverage probability increases with the base station density. Uh, now this was for the connected case where we assume that a receiver is already aligned with a base station. Uh, we also considered the non-connected case where no such uh, beam alignment is assumed. So in this scenario, the energy coverage probability uh, improves with wider antenna beams uh, and larger base station density. Uh, in both the plots, we can see that energy coverage probability with millimeter wave system is comparable to or better than that for uh, a UHF system, a lower frequency uh, system, operating at, for example, 2.1 gigahertz, uh, compared to a millimeter wave system, where, which we have assumed to be operating at 28 gigahertz. Uh, so in the next plot, we considered the case where the network has both connected and non-connected receivers. So uh, epsilon parameter is the fraction of connected receivers in the network. And uh, here we see interesting result that the energy coverage probability can be optimized by uh, optimized over uh, the transmit antenna uh, beam width. Uh, the intuition is that if the beams are made too narrow, then uh, the non-connected receivers would be an outage. But if they are made too wide, then the gains at the connected receivers would reduce. So there is uh, typically an optimum uh, antenna beam width that could maximize the energy coverage uh, for a certain um, uh, fraction of epsilon of connected and non-connected receivers. So uh, to conclude uh, this uh, talk, uh, we uh, derived uh, analytical expressions for energy coverage probability using tools from stochastic geometry. And our results suggest that uh, narrow beams can boost coverage for the connected case, while wider beams are more helpful for the non-connected case. And beam width needs to be optimized for the general scenario where the network has both connected and non-connected receivers. We also uh, showed that millimeter width networks may provide better energy coverage than UHF in some scenarios. Uh, the extension to the case of simultaneous information and power transfer is also uh, available uh, online and the reference noted. Uh, thank you.